We reach new heights. <laughs> <laughs> Try to think out of the box. Try to find something to make your own solution. Die rand daar aan de punt. Daar hebben ze een keer tegen de muurtje zo aan, tegen de pier aan gezeten. Oké. Okay. Dus maar even naar binnen kijken of het niet beschadigd is. Oké. Okay. Nou, zou ik een zwemvest om doen? Ja, dat wel. Heel ja, professioneel gerepareerd is. Ja, dat is wel best. Ah, not. Wat een ongelooflijk amateuristisch werk. Zo amateuristisch is wat ik zelf doe. Echt wel prut werk, hè? Ja. Wees al een keer in de kapot geweest. Nou, die punt, die, ze met die punt ergens tegenaan gevaren. De beschermingsrand is, uh, is eraf, ja. maar de boot zelf die is ook beschadigd. Okay. En daar hebben ze een soort van gerepareerd met cement achter. Oké. Okay. Maar het ziet er niet zo goed uit. We kunnen beter met de optie doen. Ja. ja. Dat zullen ze later van ons ook wel zeggen. Ja, dat weet ik wel zeker. <laughs> het droogt niet lekker, er komt water vanaf jongen. Echt spelen, ja, ik zag het. Hij is heel aardig uit. Ik ja. Dat uh, reparatie is er in. Zeg je? Dit is heel dun spul. Ja, dit is uh, echt van het uh, parachutestof of zo. Ja? Dat ziet er wel aardig uit, de kleurtjes. Ja? Laten we nu in het water hangen en uitproberen. Ja. Dat leuk. En heeft dat een nut voor de mensheid? Nee. Voor mijn plezier. Weer de stekker er even in. We gaan even de, even de dompelpomp proberen. Even kijken of we een beetje een fontein kunnen maken. Hij hangt nu in het water, dus moet jij de stekker er even in stoppen. Ja, dat ga ik doen. Maar, maar als ik stop roep, moet je hem er wel meteen uitrukken, oké? Okay? Ja, tuurlijk. Want ik heb geen schakelaar. Dus, uh... Oké. Okay. Nou, daar gaat hij. Het is niet veel druk, maar als je zo'n pulserende spuiten zo, kun je zo wel mooi dingen schoonmaken. Ja, jij gaat dat hele ding in het water hangen met al dat gedoe oh ja. om uh, schoon te spuiten. Anders moeten we een kerk eraan schappen. Dat is makkelijker. Even koken, dat hebben we al. En dit is zout water. Ja. Neem het even onder, dan staat hier een luik open. Ja. Dat vind je al. <laughs> At last, at last. So I'm removing the hot water tube in both taps because we don't need uh, hot water over here. Cold water is enough. So I'm closing up the hot water line under the sink and then kind of rebuild the sink and then fit a new bigger tap on top of it. Old tap, new tap. It feels good, quite heavy, so I hope it's a good quality. And I'm gonna use this hole over here. So I'm gonna blind this hole. I think I just used some tape to, uh, to blind it off and then fill it up with epoxy filler. And then I also fill these little holes up to make this totally closed but what I'm also going to do is uh, fill this up so it's gonna be a little higher up here you see some pencil lines little lines here that's where the water was it needs to go here and then flow into the sink over here but here it's also a little too 
low so I make this higher also and I'm gonna fill this up so there's just one little uh, whatever over here I'm removing this old silicon because when I'm gonna fill this up with epoxy uh, filler it's gonna connect the, the sink with, the, with the, the side here I think PVC so this also will be waterproof so that's killing one elephant with two stones no <laughs> two elephants with one stone two birds with one stone whatever it kills it So I need to fill this up and to get the right dimensions I just fold a paper into it and just use that for, uh, for the wood I'm going to use. So this is it. this when the bubble is exactly in the middle there is a lot of room over there which means that the water is not going to the right place the thing is it is not difficult to just fill it up with epoxy the difficult thing is to keep it straight so that when the epoxy is hardened out I don't have to do a lot of sanding Two days later, the epoxy on the sink is hard. It's uh, still a mess because it's very hard to make it smooth directly. So I need to do a lot of sanding. But uh, we decided to first do something more important and that is the water maker. We leave the, the sink for a while because we could do that later. And after that we have to do the, the cabin, the, the living room. We rather call it the living room to get sale ready because most of the other stuff is done and we decided to leave all the less important stuff for later we can do that when we when we're on anchor somewhere doesn't matter so that's what I'm gonna do today the water maker so here's the drawing for what it should be and because we build it out in the other boat in working condition I actually just have to hang it on the wall and then connect everything again. So that sounds easy and I hope it is easy. I think I'll start with the membrane housing. It needs to go over there. Then I think the clock pump, it needs to go here on this platform. And after that, see how I can fit in the rest. What I want to do is using this struts to lay the membrane housing on. What I want to do is making a wooden block over here with the shape of the membrane housing in it. Then put some rubber strip in it so it lays on this. Put three of those against the wall and maybe something more rigid over here. Sounds good? Sounds good. All right, after the last things I said, I've been thinking a lot and trying to figure out how I'm gonna mount everything. And I read in the manual of the manufacturer that um, the best way to do it is the membrane lower than the clock pump and I wanted to put the membrane over there and the clock pump over here. So the new idea is to get this away and then mount the membrane over here. It fits precisely, it's a little lower than the pump, which is great. And the win-win situation is that we can mount some planks over here on which we can put uh, towels or other stuff. And by doing that, using this space more sufficiently. Now the bracket that I originally wanted to use up there are okay for this but not for this so I needed to come up with something else because the hardware stores don't have good flat brackets now when we bought a diesel heater there were these brackets in the, in the package I still don't know where to use that for with a diesel heater don't need it anymore of course so I'm gonna use this to mount it over here I think this is some kind of air chamber because the floor of this uh, cupboard is approximately over here and there's nothing else in between that and the, the hull. The manual said no hard fixes because the housing of the membrane is going to expand with the, the very high pressure. 
So I guess some tie wraps will do the job. One thing to remember people, if you don't have the tools to do something, try to figure out something else. Because especially when you're uh, in a situation that you can't get to a professional whatever maker, you need to do it yourself. Okay, we haven't really been out at sea, but we did some 4x4 traveling through South America. And there were situations we needed to find a solution for a problem we had. It doesn't matter what you can find. Try to, try to think out of the box, try to find something to make your own solution. Otherwise you can get stuck somewhere and it can be dangerous. So in this case, just a big hammer did the job. Oh, and by the way, it doesn't have to be B quality, right? If you see those things, I'm not the most handy man in the world. I think this looks quite neat. They're all the same. Just by trying, comparing to each other and then do it a little different maybe. Use your brains! So what I'm going to try to do is to drill a big hole over here and then also over here because I can get to this place so I can use a big bolt over here and also for the other two so that is really strong. No, not enough difference. Try the big guy. Good enough. I use a ring for extra strength. And then a stainless steel nut with a Teflon, what is it? Teflon brake? <laughs> Teflon whatever. So it's sort of total chaos over here. Stuff everywhere. And I was kind of very frustrated because I didn't know where to put all the stuff. So I decided to make a little platform over here where I put the clock pump and then here to make some boards, 12 millimeter plywood to hang the pre-filter, one pump and I needed to put the accumulator somewhere, expansion thingy and then a 20 micron filter and a 5 micron filter and then also a carbon filter to flush the system which proves to be a little much because I also have to uh, connect everything with hoses of course and especially the high pressure hoses you can't make a small turn or uh, do some knees not in all uh, places that's what the manufacturer says so I need to fit everything somewhere so because I was totally frustrated and totally panicked Anya came to the rescue. Now sometimes it's good to do a little brainstorm session together because uh, Anya may be not the technical part of our marriage but she has a lot of ideas and sometimes um, just by combining our ideas we reach new heights. <laughs> new disasters. <laughs> new disasters she says. True story. So what I'm gonna do now is make a kind of uh, a cupboard here uh, where I put the carbon filter the expansion thingy and I also need to put the pressure meter and the flow meter somewhere so I'm gonna make a, I think a door over here and put the flow meter and the pressure meter in it and behind it the uh, expansion thingy and the carbon filter and yes it messes up my beautiful uh, toilet but I think a water maker is more important than uh, nice room both is in this case not possible so I cut a cardboard template because again no straight corners so I really need to otherwise this is not gonna work one little mistake over here so let's see 
that's it. Ta da! One step further. And I found these brackets over here. There's a hardware store that has all kind of garden stuff and also filters. So we had these brackets that fit perfectly. Ta da! So I need to fit two of those filters over here, here, and one over here. So this is gonna be it, approximately. <laughs> so again, change of plans. Yes, I keep changing because when I'm busy doing things, got new ideas, sometimes better ideas. This thing. Uh, I think I told you I wanted to put it here together with the, the carbon filter. But I think that carbon filter fits over there and maybe I can put this one here. Which would make me happy because it looks better and it makes Anya happy because she has all this space left. I only have to find a, a knee for this instead of a straight one. Otherwise the hose is going to touch the pump and I think it's going to be a little hot. Because I need to do epoxy work anyway now for the water maker stuff. I also try to do the sink at the same time. It's easier, right? Because I have to make epoxy stuff anyway. I took the old tap, stuck some tape on it, transparent tape, which doesn't uh, stick to uh, epoxy. And use that as a kind of mold to make a good hole for the new tap. What I want to do is using this kind of clay epoxy, double component too. I hope you can see it, I don't think so. And make a kind of higher piece here on which the tap rests. It's always when you have a tap somewhere, it gets dirty around here. Sometimes impossible to get it clean. So what I want to do is I want to lift this a little with this clay epoxy so it's easier to clean. Yeah. It's two component, so you have to mix it like normal fluid epoxy. Gets hot. I think I need another piece. So it's clear we need a little more. I have epoxied the sink way smoother than it was, and this. So everything is closed up and kind of waterproof what I'm doing now is making the right hose connections so when everything is closed up and painted I can just hang everything over there with connected hoses and then just connect the last hose to the clock pump and all never too close to the to the edge otherwise there's a possibility it's gonna be like this which obstructs your flow you don't want to have that Never too tight because this is plastic. So, I'm a little frustrated because I'm working on this water maker, as you know, right now. And I had the plan to do the seawater strainer over here directly into the pump. But I need to also integrate this, uh, which will contain a carbon filter later on, to flush the system every time after we use it. So we need to get fresh water from the tank to the pump. So the pump has to suck it out of the tank. But there was not enough room for a three-way valve. I'm going to place this over here and then I'm going to put the carbon filter somewhere over here. And this line goes to this side of the three-way valve. Man, I get a headache. Sometimes I'm just totally sick of it. But at the end we will have fresh water as much as we like. And that's what counts. Right now I'm making a kind of platform for the clock pump because the manual states that the clock pump especially this part should be uh, the same height or even better higher than the membrane because of trapped air so what i'm going to do because this platform is too low i have made a, a little extra platform two times 12 millimeter plywood to put the clock pump higher 
I'm gonna screw and glue this little platform on the big platform and then make four holes through all the platforms so I can put in bolts on which I can put the clock pump. Now I can uh, drill the holes for the bolts for the pump. The bolts are a little too tall, actually needed 70, 75, these are 80. That's all the hardware store had in uh, stainless steel, 60 or 80. some two component polyurethane white paint to paint the sink. This surface is not perfect, that's a shame. I don't have the right stuff to really make it smooth. So I sent it as good as possible, but there's some little dips, <laughs> little uh, bumps in it, not bumps, bumps but then the other side, downwards. I epoxied some stuff to make it really smooth and I hope this will work out. not that good quality paint but I think the result is okay for the first time I need to sand it when it's really hardened out and then see if we can make something more beautiful the platform and all is painted for the first time I need to apply some cork over there and up to the next problem this one is not really made for things like water makers and all kind of comfort it's too old for that I'm now trying to run a hose from seawater inlet to the water maker but there's no hole left over there actually you're almost looking at the hull over there so I need to drill a hole an extra hole but I really need to watch out not to drill through the hole my plan for now is to connect the inlet of the water maker to the inlet of the toilet I know I know I know it's not a good idea it's just temporary because I need to have an inlet the other inlet the inlet that I actually want to have is over there that's the transducer of the old depth sounder so I need to put in a new through hole but I can't because we are in the water and we're not just putting the boat on the heart for just one inlet so this is a temporary fix and we'll need to switch off the water maker when we use the toilet my drill just fits as you can see I can feel some polyester now it's harder to drill but that's polyester and glass mats that is used to connect the floor with the hull I'm gonna take five extra looks before before I go further, just to make sure. Still no water coming out. Just joking. I felt under the floor and I can't feel the drill. It is this distance from the from the hole, so we're safe. Luckily. Actually, I need to apply a layer of epoxy in the hole because the epoxy I have is so slow hardening. I'm gonna use some of this stuff, which is hard in five minutes. for installation. the accumulator, the expansion thingy, over here. This is the bright outlet. 
it goes out of the boat over there under the floor in here i think the best way i can do it is to take this route This second hose I'm gonna put underneath the floor is the inlet that leads to the seawater strainer. So I made a new hole over there and it's going under the floor to there. So next day and I did some more stuff. This is what I've done. I installed the two filters, 20 and five micron, the accumulator, the expansion thingy, the feed pump without fins and fan still, and then the seawater strainer, the carbon filter, and now I'm busy connecting the carbon filter with the water tank, other side of the bulkhead. It's a little bit like doing a puzzle in the... <laughs> oh, <laughs> now I'm filming this. Let's see, I have a double valve, which is stupid because I just need one valve. I'm gonna tell in a later video everything about the system. And here, because we have this room left, I've made two planks over there, so we can stuff some stuff over here. The only thing I use from this is this space because I'm gonna need some space for the pressure meter and the flow meter. So I'm first gonna remove that uh, tap. Or maybe I'll just leave it there. No, I better leave it there because then I can close it when I need to renew the carbon filter. So this is the line that goes from the main tank behind the city. We have three 300 liter fresh water tanks. It's going to the fresh water pump. So I made a T and this goes to the carbon filter. So from here comes the fresh water. And here I drilled a hole and I glued in uh, an elbow. This is the fill hose for the for the main tank. So the product water from the water maker goes in here and flows into the tank. I need to make a little frame for the flow meter and the pressure meter and it needs to be 90 degrees. I was thinking how to do it 90 degrees. So I thought maybe this was a good idea. <laughs> okay. So this is what it's going to look like. It's not very, very strong or something, but look. And this is going to be white. I'm gonna connect the clock pump to the membrane. So this high pressure output needs to be connected with this side because here it says high pressure inlet. Not too tight. I hope you can see it. Let's see if I can get it sharp. These are tapered rings with another ring behind it. If you screw this on these connections of the pump, of the clock pump, this will put great tension on this connection so there won't be any leakages. But you gotta be careful with this because if you have one scratch or whatever, it's not gonna close up anymore, you get leakages. I hope I can show you a little bit of this way. This is very tight. I'm sitting on my toilet again, thinking. No, don't be scared. <laughs> I'm doing nothing over here, just sitting on it. I made quite some progression with the water maker, but it's not ready. I need to connect the electricity. I need to pull new cables from the breakers till here, which is not a big job, it needs to be done. So I have an outlet or actually inlet here. This is to uh, suck water from a bucket for a flush. It's too close to the ground. I came up with a new idea to move this from here to here and then have some simple garden hose outlets so I can just remove it when I'm done with the flushing. So this is enough uh, distance to the floor to put the bucket underneath. And then I also put a T-piece over here. The hose is going to go also this way. So I get two of those together. So when I need to flush, it's both here. Great piece of equipment.
So that was it for this video. Uh, hope you liked it. Next time I'm gonna give you a run of the water maker, I guess, when it's ready. And uh, I guess then the sink is ready too. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like, ring a bell, thumbs up, it's always appreciated. And have a good time. See you later. Mm -hmm.